I think about the audience's time. I don't care what the viewer thinks. You're not experimenting with the camera. You are getting the job done. I know exactly the movie I'm trying to make. Do you script the video first? Four minutes of the movie's done, and I don't even know what the rest is. Ready to go at, at all times. So I just want to point out, we're a minute 25 in, and there's like four stop motion shots. There's switched back pans. Literally, there's probably like, I don't know, 20 cuts. Way more than that. 40 Way cuts. Way more than that, yeah. I mean... We're a minute and a half in. A minute and a half is, you know, 24 times uh, 85. Do you know what your average cuts per second is? No, but I think fast cuts and chop, chop, chop can get really annoying. I think it's cool at one point in time, but I think it's really annoying. So my goal is to have you never notice the cuts. What I admire about your videos and what I think is separates your videos from literally everybody else's oh, on that's YouTube. That's very sweet, thank you. 15 seconds of silence. Why are you using silence so much? Andre Tarkovsky, Sculpting in Time. Have I, you read that book? No, I haven't. Okay, you have to read it. Okay. He said something like, you just, you're not experimenting with the camera. You are getting the job done. You have the confidence in that shot. You know what the shot is, and that's what's gonna go in there. You know how long it's gonna be. And the experimentation might be with the performance or so forth, or some little tiny tweaks in there. But, and I, th I think it was the, you know, just, be confident this is what the shot is, be confident what this movie is, and be confident that you're hooking the audience so that they care. What proportion of all your shooting do we see in the final video? If it's a video like I'm making today where it's just me in total control, you know, you're seeing I'm hyper efficient, 60, 70% of it. Even like when I'm flying my drone, I set the shot. Once the shot is locked, I click record stop like i hate it when people let the fucking camera roll you like you really learn to shoot when you're editing and there's all this fat and noise and i don't want to sift through that i know exactly the movie i'm trying to make so hyper hyper efficient when i was growing up in the 1990s young people almost never talked about politics or political issues do you script the video first Basically, not 100% of them, but no. almost all. And then you speak it through, it, you, you hold up a mic and you basically yes. monologue. Yes. The Boosted Board, the company went out of business right around the same time. When you're um, telling a story to camera, do you write out a paragraph of no, what never, you're gonna say? Ever. And how much do you think about what you're gonna say before you say it? You don't. You don't write it out, you don't plan it out. No. That's how Casey and I used to work when we were doing the TV series. Wait, where you wouldn't come up with the whole plot structure I would be, beforehand? I, would have a, I wouldn't have like the hook at the end. I wouldn't have like the irony at the end. That's like the plot point too, like that brings you to the conclusion. I was four minutes into editing a video. That'll probably be a six or seven minute long video. And I'm four minutes into the edit and those four minutes are complete. So four minutes of the movie's done and I don't even know what the rest is. How much do you think about audience when you're making stories? How much are you thinking about the successful transmission of the feeling versus enjoying being in the flow and doing your thing and making art for yourself? It's kind of like, you know, that your conscience voice, that's very quiet and it just kind of tickles you. I think about it like that, like little, like, um, and it's very detailed little things. It's not big picture stuff. Mm. Big picture is just like, well, if they don't like this, it won't get enough views and I'll go poor and that'll be the end of it. But for little things, I'm very cognizant of, okay, if this two seconds doesn't need to be in here and a million people watch it, that's two million seconds I've wasted <laughs> of people's, of human beings time. Every frame has to embody for me, like a level 10 amount of interestingness. If it doesn't, I'm bored when I'm editing it and I don't care. And if I don't care, then like, how's anybody else? I, I just don't care. So like this shot, right. the 108 to 114, like we're looking, this is like a six or seven second shot. I'm fucking bored of this shot. Make it interesting. And so like for this last video I did where um, I drove up to Montana to get the engine switched out in my truck. There was one shot where I'm introducing like that the engine overheats and that's why I'm getting a new engine. One of the reasons. And 
I opened that sequence with a shot of the thermostat. Redlined and overheated at 45 going over these passes. And then I go back to the thermostat and it, it, bothered, it just bothered me a little, little bit every time I, I was editing it. But you're editing so fast that you just kind of leave things. And then I slept on it, went back, and then the day I was gonna upload it, right before the upload, I just, I pulled it out. Cause I'm like, no, they don't, they, they don't need that. How do you know that what you're feeling is what your viewers are gonna feel? Oh, like? I don't That's give a, dumb a question. shit what the viewers So it's just feel. what you're feeling? Yeah. So when you watch that back, you're just trusting how, your own response and thinking, well, maybe other people will feel that way too. I don't even go to the second part. It's just your own response. Yeah. I don't care what the viewer thinks. But you do. I don't know that I do. If I like it and I think it's great and it works for me, then that's it. Is that really true? Sure. What if your videos didn't get millions of views? Would you still they make didn't. videos? Yeah. And you did. You did still make videos. Yeah. Yeah. So you really don't I give a just, fuck. I used to make them put them on VHS tapes and like give them to people and hope they'd watch them. I didn't care. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I had dreams and aspirations that I thought my videos could get me there. Like, I don't want to, I wasn't, I'm not like some pure artist who makes a perfect painting and hangs it in a basement somewhere. I, I, it's validation. Like, it, it's meaningful to me. These movies mean something to people. Yeah. But the minute I stop trusting how they make me feel and start looking to how they make others feel, it's like, that's when you fail. To me, creativity is that trance where you are just, you are not, you're, it's like being on drugs. You are not really conscious. You are just the thing that you're making and blah, blah, blah. And you, uh, and, uh, oh, wait, I know, I'll use the soldering iron. Me, 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 and then the whole mess and stuff. But everything has to be exactly where it always is because you won't be able to be in that trance if you have to stop. Where is the, where is the resin? Where is this, where is a, 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 a toothpick to stir the resin? Anytime I've taken on a big project, I have sort of failed invariably because I, I lose focus. And like why I love making little videos that I can start and finish in a day is because that's a straight line from A to B. Just get rid of all distractions. I, like my studio's filthy right now because I have no employees. I don't have an assistant. I don't have somebody that helps me with my phone calls or my schedule. I don't keep a schedule. I don't have a calendar. I don't take phone, like I'm nothing. I am just nothing. Like my agent doesn't know how to reach me and that's fine because I just want to sit here alone and figure out how to make videos.